All right. All my people in here from Maryland, everybody out here from Maryland, anybody in the building from Maryland, anybody from Maryland, 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 anybody in Maryland, DMV area, DMV area, DMV area. I don't got nobody blocked on Instagram. Sorry to disappoint you. I'll get to it, but I ain't got nobody blocked on Instagram. Unless you said something stupid. And I know that ain't you, but I'll get to it. Let's get to it. This is right outside the D.C. Oh. First of all, let's handle the business first. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976 allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, common news reporting, teacher scholarship, and research. Fair use is used permitted by the copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing nonprofit educational personal use to balance in favor of fair use. Let's go. The area. Uh, and we still have uh, live aerial pictures over the scene uh, of this shooting incident. That live aerial pictures over the scene uh, back out to Greenbelt, Maryland there. Uh, this is right outside the D.C. area. Uh, and we still have uh, live aerial pictures over the scene uh, of this shooting incident that took place uh, as teens and juveniles were participating there. In senior skip day, uh, and law enforcement told us that uh, shots rang out, five individuals, all male, were injured. And so law enforcement just wrapped up a press conference on this. So let's listen. A, a recap of what happened today. Uh, somewhere at about 2.30 this afternoon, officers from the Greenbelt Police Department responded to Strom Hills Park, which is located in the 6900 block of Hanover Parkway. Uh, when they arrived on scene, the original officer discovered about five to 600, what he believed to be high school students in the park. Uh, for those that have not been there, this park is not big, so that's a lot of kids jammed into this particular space. Um, he requested additional officers to respond to the park, and a number of officers from the Greenbelt Police Department, as well as the Prince George's County Police Department, and the Maryland State Police responded to provide assistance. Uh, officers arrived on scene uh, and began trying to control traffic and the crowd as well, and while those officers were walking into the park, uh, they heard the sound of gunshots. They believed at that time to be a number of shots, not verified, but eight to 10 gunshots. Uh, officers then immediately responded to where those shots came from in an active shooter response. Uh, not only members of the Greenbelt Police Department, but again, Prince George's County Police Department and the Maryland State Police. Officers responded, they located five wounded individuals. Uh, they immediately be began providing medical care to those individuals. Uh, while they secured the area and searched for a suspect. At that moment, when the shots were fired, all of those individuals that were in the park began to flee out on the Hanover Parkway. Uh, when they did that, we believe that the suspect left with them uh, and fled the park. Uh, we had not located him at this point. Uh, officers provided medical care to those five individuals who were transported to local hospitals. Uh, the age range of those five individuals is 16 to 18. Uh, all five were taken to an area hospital. Uh, one is in critical condition. The other four are listed as in stable condition. This is currently an active investigation, and we are looking for any information from those individuals who may have been at the party uh, to be able to help us identify this particular suspect. Anybody who has information can contact the Greenbelt Police Department at 301-474-7200. Let me say that this is a horrible, tragic, senseless act that happened today. There's absolutely no reason that this occurred. Um, it is senseless. It is chronic in our society. And we have to do something to stop it. These were kids on senior skip day uh, who were looking to have a good time in a local park. Uh, and to have something like this occur uh, is just, it's maddening, honestly. And, and to, the, to the individuals that were there, to their classmates, to the school, to our community. This isn't just going to be something that affects a small group of people. This affects not only the city of Greenbelt, but our entire county, our entire state. These are kids, these are high school kids, and, and this is just uh, unnecessary, unacceptable. And we have to come together and find a way 
to keep this from happening. You know, it, it just, again, I'm pretty upset by this and, and there's just, there's gotta be a way to get this to stop happening. Um, with that, I'll, I'll ask my city manager to come forward and say a few words. Thank you, police chief. This is a very unfortunate event that happened. Uh, there's really no words to, to say how senseless this violence is. And I agree with the chief that we have to find ways of getting guns off our streets and doing more on how we can help our young people have better relationships with each other because these are young people hurting each other. Um, like Chief said, this is an investigation, so we'll have uh, further evidence and details to highlight in the coming days. And I hope that we can find a resolution uh, and find the person responsible or persons responsible for this senseless act of violence. Now, leading up to the event, our officers were on scene, and I feel fortunate that we had so many officers already on the scene uh, that were there, and I'm sure that that helped in reducing the number of victims in, in this incident. I also am grateful for the numerous law enforcement agencies that were already on site and provided an immediate response to this incident, and that includes the uh, Prince George's County Police, uh, Berwyn Heights, um, Maryland State Police. We also had support from ATF and the FBI, and we're grateful for all the assistance that we receive. Uh, moving forward, we're going to be diligent about these unscheduled activities that are happening in our community. Um, we're going to we're going to we'll play a greater role in tracking and reporting these incidents. Um, with that said, thank you for your for your patience as we look for swift resolutions to this open case and this investigation. And I'll hand the floor over to our mayor. Good afternoon. So it's my understanding that this was a senior skip day meetup informally organized on social media. So I've been told that the, the group uh, migrated here from the, another area. So our schools, and uh, recreational facilities in Greenbelt were locked down and we've, we've closed them uh, out of an abundance of caution. So uh, I'm just grateful that our officers were able to quickly help on the scene. And we're grateful for the support of the county and the state. I received a, a call from uh, the governor stating his support. So our thoughts are with, with the families, with the classmates, and with the victims, it's just it's unnecessary. And if a group of uh, high school students cannot get together and have a good time, what, what is the world coming to? So we're, we're shocked. Uh, we're grateful for the support, but we have to find a way to, uh, to deal with uh, situations like this before, before they happen. So at this time, I think we're going to take questions. So Senator Washington, did you have uh, sure, some sure. questions? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Alonzo Washington. I'm a state senator that represents Greenbelt in this area. Um, today is a tough day for not only Greenbelters, but for Marylanders. Uh, to see the census violence happen right here in our home, right here in my hometown of Greenbelt, um, it's hurtful. It's not hurtful to me, but it's hurtful to the entire state. Our students and our families deserve a safe place, even in a grocery store or at a park. They deserve to be safe. And unfortunately, this, this, we, we, unfortunately, that happened today. Our students were not safe, and they deserve to be safe. And so we're going to do everything we can to provide the resources that our city needs and our county needs to make sure we bring the individuals that caused this to justice. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Billy White Shoes Johnson for XL Federal Credit Union. I did the funky chicken in the NFL. You know, the funky chicken. So before we start taking questions, just a couple of, of points. Um, like I said, this is an active investigation. So at this time, we won't release a lot of information onto the details of that particular investigation. Uh, I will say, you know, one of the things that in these kinds of instances, you know, the officers were there and, and what they did that to get out there and make sure that nobody else was injured and provide medical aid. You know, it, it's the kind of thing that, that really you know, is what they're trained to do on a regular basis. And I, I can't thank the individual officers enough 
uh, for their response, not only our officers with the city of Greenbelt, but the Prince George's County and the Maryland State Police officers, they all responded effectively, utilized their training to secure the scene and provide medical care. And then that could be the, the difference between, you know, somebody making it to the hospital and somebody not. So can't say enough about the quality of, of the response from the officers. Really want to thank them. Thank you for coming and, and making this story public. Um, you know, the, the Prince George County Fire Department was on scene and really w was a big benefit. They, they provided all that medical care and transport. So thank you to them. You know, and to the families of those, those young men that were injured. You know, I, again, I have kids. You know, I can't imagine if my kids were involved in something like that. You know, I, I, my heart breaks for them. I mean, these are just kids trying to have a good time. And this is what was what we're treating our kids to. And it's how we're, they're, they're growing up. It's, it's completely, it's, so I'm speechless. Um, and so to those, to those parents, my heart breaks for them you know, and a speedy recovery to their kids and anything we can do to close that investigation, we will. Um, so at this point, I'll take a handful of questions. I want to be respectful of everybody's time. Um, can I some more hope? Yeah, no, okay. I'll take a, uh, questions, we'll, we'll start. Yes, ma'am. Chief, do you know if there was more than one shooter? At this time, I, I can't confirm the number of suspects involved, but we believe there was one. We're hearing stuff about water guns as well. Was this happening at this park or the previous event that was taking place in Bowie? No, that, that, that was here. Uh, so, you know, what happens is on these, these the kids leave the school and they come over to the local park uh, and they bring super soakers and other squirt guns and, and they, have, they have a good time playing water gun battles. Um, happened last year uh, and it was relatively peaceful the number of occasions we had last year. We didn't have any incidents. Uh, and so, you know, this is, this is unfortunate. Like I said, you know, we were all high school kids one time or another and, and so we might not condone skipping school, but it's, it's the senior skip day and, you know, this kind of thing is just it's a tragedy that happens on such a, an occasion for these kids. Chief, you mentioned last year the, the incident. How much, if anything, was known about this event that was coming? Was there any stance that was taken? We, we did not know about this um, until it happened. Uh, and one of the things that occurs is the city uh, has park rangers, and they make regular patrols through that park. They had been through the park a little after 1.30, uh, and there was nobody there. Uh, when they came, when we got the second call to come back just before 2.30, that's when all these kids materialized in the park. So it is something that we're aware of and we, we patrol the parks regularly, uh, whether it be police staff or our park ranger staff. Uh, so we do have a presence in the parks on a pretty regular basis. Uh, and it was in a pretty short time frame that all of these individuals showed up. Yes, sir. And you mentioned ages 16, 18, all uh, male? Yes, sir. And then um, just just to follow up, um, we would like that, sorry, come back, come back to me. Yeah. What, yes, sir. Um, how many high schools were involved in this? Do you know? I, I do not know the number of, of schools that were involved. Yeah. And um, you said uh, one in critical, the other four stable. Yes. Stable is not a condition. Do you know fair, good? Uh, they. What I was told by the hospital is stable. Okay. So, Chief, is it fair to say that these were um, hundreds of high, high school seniors from different high schools in the district? Or are there one or two specific schools? Because we know it started in Bowie. Yeah, I, I don't know how many different schools are associated. And I, I don't want to speculate at this point because I don't know. I do know that they were kids from Eleanor Roosevelt High School, uh, as well as kids from perhaps Bowie and maybe some of the other adjoining high schools. Chief, there's uh, some video of uh, quite a few young men being detained. Uh, it looked like there was a vehicle that was pulled over and about 11 young men. Can you tell me about that process, if any, uh, if anybody's being looked at, if those people are still being detained. So that was that was just part of the sort of the routine. That, I don't want to say routine. That that initial response uh, and stopping and identifying individuals that may or may not have what we believe at that time to have been associated. All those individuals have been uh, cleared at this point and released. Were there any security cameras in the area? No, there are no security cameras there. Chief, what are you relying on to help solve this? There's no cameras. I'm just hoping that the students speak. We we are hoping that uh, that the the students will come forward. Uh, we're already starting to see some video online, uh, and we know that there's going to be a lot more of that kind of video out there. So we're really hoping that the students will start sending us that video or at least post it so we can get it from there. Because uh, we know that the person involved is definitely on a camera somewhere. Like I said, there was about 20 police officers, so we have a lot of body worn camera footage, uh, and so we'll scrub through all of that as well uh, as we try to locate anybody that might have been involved. Yes, sir. What's your preliminary understanding of possible motives here? We we have nothing at this point. I, I wouldn't even want to begin to speculate on what a motive was. Were the victims random, as you understand? I, I can't answer that question. I don't know. What what was, um, I guess, the goal of having the officers there in the first place? And 
What was the time frame between them getting there and these shots being fired? They, they had been on scene about 10 to 15 minutes, I believe, uh, before the shots were fired. You know, obviously, the, the reason they were there is because when you have five to 600 kids in a park, I mean, there's a lot of things that can happen. Uh, and so that presence to make sure that it stays as a relatively fun event for the kids uh, was the entire purpose. The other issue that we we can had was the traffic uh, along the adjoining roadway was completely stopped from all the cars. Uh, and so they had to get that relieved uh, as well as monitor the crowd. Um, our initial response was to simply monitor the crowd um, and let them, you know, let them use the park. Um, you know, it's, it's a lawful activity. There'd be no reason to kick them out of the park. Uh, and so we were going to let them use the park. Uh, and, and unfortunately it didn't happen. All right. So the chief law enforcement officer there for Greenbelt, Maryland, giving an update on this, um, pretty scary and dangerous shooting incident today that happened, uh, at this park, there were hundreds of young people there. Uh, they're kind of terming this, the senior skip day shooting five individuals, uh, were struck by gunfire, uh, and they were all male, uh, three of them adults, two of them. Uh, juveniles and so we'll just have to wait and see if we get any more updates we've been in touch with our Fox 5 DC folks as well they're covering this story but still just a scary situation there so I wanted to make sure you heard all of that now Shout out to everybody in Maryland, D.C. area. Call your peoples if y'all know that school. Check and see if your family's good. These little young boys, is they wilding, man. They wilding. But we, we I'm going to keep it in the news real quick. There's another big breaking story right now. That's uh, coming out of New York City. This is a uh, another breaking story right now. A man just set himself on fire outside of Donald Trump's trial. Has now been seated in Donald Trump's criminal hush money trial, and just as new news broke of that full jury being seated, a man appeared to set himself on fire outside the courthouse where that trial is underway. It's unclear who the man is or his condition at this hour. The judge in this trial hoping to start opening statements on Monday, and it's becoming more likely that that's going to happen. We do have a team of reporters covering every angle of this story inside the courthouse and out, where you see that scene now still smoldering from the man who set himself on fire, that square there where protesters pro-Trump and anti-Trump have been gathering. We do not know who the man is, what, if anything, he was trying to say by doing something something so awful, an act of self-harm. Uh, we did see him taken away, though, by uh, emergency personnel, put in an ambulance. Our Olivia Rubin on the scene saying he seemed badly burned from her perspective, just she was just a few feet away. Uh, our reporter on this trial, Aaron Katursky, senior investigator.
Breaking news first at five for you tonight. A man from St. Augustine making worldwide headlines tonight after setting himself on fire outside the trial against Donald Trump in New York City. And you can see right there the flames and smoke as people just ran from the scene today, Anthony. And Jeannie, that man has been identified tonight as Max Azzarello. You see two mug shots of a man here next to me. This is actually from his arrest in St. John's County just three days apart in August of last year. Those arrests were for criminal mischief and disturbing the peace, both misdemeanors. So this is what we know right now at 5 o'clock on this Friday. Around 1.30, the man walked into a park near the New York City courthouse where former President Donald Trump is on trial. Witnesses telling police he opened a book bag, then he scattered pamphlets around the park. Then he poured a liquid on himself before setting himself on fire. He then fell onto a police barricade. Investigators say it appears that he had a vast conspiracy involving the American government, a university, political figures, and major financial players. It was, it was so fast that um, uh, no one could do anything about it. And uh, once he lit himself on fire and you saw those massive flames, it was just like kind of helpless. Tonight, our Andrew Badillo is on your side, joining us now with a closer look on what we're learning about this and the man suspected of doing it, Andrew. Yeah, Anthony Azzarello is in critical condition at a New York hospital. Police and witnesses say this afternoon he was outside the courthouse throwing those flyers in the air. He then doused himself in that flammable substance and lit himself on fire. The NYPD says witnesses and first responders tried to use jackets and fire extinguishers to put out the flames. Police say Azzarello left behind a manifesto. It is looking into when Azzarello got to New York City. It says his family didn't even know he left Florida. We're also looking into more into uh, about Azzarello's prior history. In August of last year, he was arrested twice in one week in St. Augustine for disturbing the peace and criminal mischief, both of those misdemeanor charges. He also filed a federal lawsuit su suing dozens of well-known people and organizations, including the Bill, Hillary, and Chelsea Clinton Foundation. Now, Azzarello is also acu is accusing the entities of knowingly conspiring, participating, and benefiting financially from a decades-long fraudulent scheme. The suit was dismissed by a judge in October. And we still are gathering more information on Azzarello's history, and we'll bring you more details on what we find at 6. In the newsroom, Andrew Badillo, First Coast News on your side. Yo, what is going on out here, bro? You know what? I'm not going to even write this dude off as crazy because he might... Uh, he might have a valid argument, beef, whatever, without, with all this other conspiracy stuff going on. Who's to say that this man is crazy? And he probably took himself to burn himself up to get the attention that he needed for the people, the world to pay attention. But now he's not in no goddamn uh, good position. Because if, if what he's saying is true, and they go look at that paperwork and be like, whoa, uh, he didn't make it, y'all. Somebody give me a pillow. Oof, 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 oof. Uh, he didn't make it, y'all. Yeah, he burnt himself to death. He died. We tried everything. That he, we tried everything. You know what I'm saying? Let me get to my next story here.
Okay. Now, 